It seems Satan has certain authority with God's permission in the lower heavens. There, he is ready to tempt humans and commit as much evil as possible in the world. Archangel Michael then loudly exclaimed, Let us pay attention, so as not to fall with Satan and his followers. And Satan stood up against Israel, and provoked David to number Israel. 1 Chronicles 21-1 Who is Satan? Satan, the Hebrew noun Satan, Shin Kamatz, Tet Kamatz Non, originates from the Hebrew verb Satan, Shin Kamatz, Tet Patak Non, meaning to oppose, to resist, to accuse, to prosecute, literally meaning adversary, sometimes personifying all real powers that oppose God and human salvation. Notice the distinction in the spelling of the noun and verb, although their pronunciation is similar. Firstly, this event occurs before humanity's fall into sin. Some angels fell due to rebellion against God. One of them is a cherub who is exceedingly beautiful and endowed with divine gifts more than others, as the prophet Isaiah said. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Isaiah 14, 12, 15. Prophet Ezekiel depicts the king of Tyre as a fallen cherub. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created, till wickedness was found in you. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. I reduced you to ashes on the ground. Ezekiel 28 verse 12 to 18. This fall was as swift as lightning, as recounted by Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Luke 10 18. These fallen cherubim drew a number of angels from various ranks, including some higher ones, and took them with him. They were expelled from heaven and forced to wander on earth. Archangel Michael fought against the rebellious Satan and his followers, leading to a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. Revelation 12, 7, 8. As explained by Saint Ignatius Brian Chaninov, Satan took with him a third of the angels and threw them down to earth. Archangel Michael then loudly exclaimed, Let us pay attention, so as not to fall with Satan and his followers. Michael did not judge Satan. He only requested attention and vigilance once. And since then, the relationship between angels faithful to God has grown stronger through grace, and they are no longer subject to evil. From then on, there has been fierce warfare between angels loyal to God and Satan, along with his followers. All the gifts bestowed upon the demons turned into evil. Saint Ignatius Brian Chaninov explained that before Adam's fall, Satan wandered in heaven with a great sense of emptiness. God allowed him to enter the Edenic paradise to see its beauty and gave him the opportunity to repent. But he envied Adam and Eve and tried in every way to drive them out of paradise, succeeding in expelling them from heaven and even bringing them under his control. Thus, Satan lost all hope of returning to God. Since humanity's fall into sin, there has been a great conflict within humans between the angels of light and the angels of darkness. The angels of light are sent by God to assist humans even from the time of the Old Testament. We see Archangel Gabriel responsible for Israel as they left Egypt, Archangel Raphael helping Tobit.
Michael sent to assist Joshua son of Nun and contending with Satan over the body of Moses. However, Satan always tries to make humans sin, unaware that he is fulfilling God's will, as every evil always ends in good. Thus, Satan becomes God's instrument of testing for humans. Essentially, we are slaves bound to sin and Satan. Whoever lives in transgression and sin and follows the ways of this world, obeys the ruler of the heavenly realm. Thus, Satan, or the ruler of evil spirits, is depicted, see Matthew 12, 24, 26. The fallen angelic forces are like a unified power under one leader. Therefore, what elsewhere is referred to as dark powers here is described in singular form. The heavens are depicted as the throne of Satan's kingdom, and both Jews and pagans indeed believed that the skies were full of spirits, and that is where these spirits worked. It seems Satan has certain authority with God's permission in the lower heavens. There, he is ready to tempt humans and commit as much evil as possible in the world. However, it is a comfort and joy for the people of God that he, who is the head over all things for the church, has conquered Satan and bound him. But the wicked are slaves of Satan, because they live according to him. They live and act according to the will and pleasure of this usurper. Their deeds and purposes are done according to his advice and follow his temptations. They submit to him and become his captives, bound by his will. So he is called the God of this world and the spirit now working among the disobedient. The disobedient are those who choose not to obey God and serve Satan. In them, Satan works so strongly and effectively. Just as the good spirit does good in the obedient soul, so this evil spirit does evil in the wicked. And now he is working, not only from now, but also since the world was blessed with the light of the glorious gospel. By reconciling the world and God through his death, Christ destroyed the power of death and cast out Satan the destroyer. By drawing the world to God through the teaching of his cross, Christ destroyed the power of sin and cast out Satan, the deceiver. The crushing of his heel means the crushing of the head of the serpent Genesis 3.15. When his minions are silenced, his temples are abandoned, his idols are neglected, and the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of Christ. At that moment, the prince of this world is thrown out, as seen through John's vision in Revelation 12, 8, 11, which says it was done with the blood of the Lamb. The expulsion of evil spirits from people's bodies by Christ is a sign of the great plan contained in all his tasks. Note how deeply Christ speaks of his victory over Satan. He declares his victory as if it had already happened. Indeed, even when he seemed to be surrendering to death, he was actually conquering it. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. John 12 31-33